Hello and welcome to this special Mithril Money Excel Library video on generating a yield curve with the Nelson Siegel Svensson method. Now, before we get into any Excel, let's just describe our problem. We live on a country called Mithril Island. And Mithril Island is somewhere in the Pacific. And on Mithril Island, the capital city is called Ring Central. And in Ring Central, we have a special bank called the Mithril Money Bank, and we use them to provide the standard riskless yield curve. They are the bank which have the lowest amount of risk in the country, so they provide the standard yield curve. They only have a certain number of bonds. Let's just see what bonds they have outstanding at the moment. So they've got a one year bond, and that's currently at a yield of 0.39%. They also have a two year bond. And that's currently at 0.61%. They have a five-year bond, and that's at 1.66%, and two more bonds to go. So we've got a 10-year bond, and that's at 2.58%. And the final one we have, which is currently being traded, is a 25-year bond, and that's trading at 3.32%. Now you might think, well, that's fine. The only problem with that, though, is that if we built up a yield curve from those figures, the problem is, is we don't have any figures in between. We'd like to get a nice curve. And why do we want to get a full nice curve? The reason why is because we have a client who's phoned us up on the island, and to get $10 million profit from this particular client, we need to have a really, really good good estimate for two things, the 20 year yield for Mithril Money Bank and the 30 year yield for Mithril Money Bank bonds. Unfortunately, of course, as we can see from our list, we don't have those figures. We've got the 10 year and we've got the 25 year, but we haven't got the 20 year and we haven't got the 30 year. So are we going to wave bye bye to the 10 million profit from the client is coming into Mithril Island or are we going to have a really good educated attempt at trying to create those missing bits and pieces on a particular yield curve? Well, we can. We can use a thing called the Nelson Siegel Svensson method to generate really good educated guesses as to what those bits in between should be and what those points extrapolated should be too. Okay, let's bring up a special Excel spreadsheet. Now this has absolutely no formulas on here. This is just formatted, so there's no formulas anywhere. We have a chart which has nothing on it. And what we'd like to do then is we'd like to put the known yields into this column on the left. Let's just quickly do that then. So we just need to have a look at the first screen and transfer the figures. So 0.39% for first year yield. The two year bond is going at 0.61. The five year yield is at 1.66. The 10 year is at 2.58. The 25 year is at 3.32. They look pretty good to me. You'll notice we don't have the 20 year, which we'd like to interpolate. We don't have the 30 year, which we'd like to extrapolate, because if we can extrapolate those things, then we're going to get those figures calculated. And we're going to be able to make the 10 million profit and that's what we'd like to do. Let's get back to the Excel spreadsheet then. Let's open it up. Let's bring it over to the right hand side. There we go. So you can see we've got this kind of raggedy yield curve here. We need to know the 20 year, which we think will be somewhere in this area. And we'd like to get the 30 year, which we think will be somewhere over here. OK, let's uh, see how we're going to begin this to get this Nelson Siegel Svensson method going. The first thing we need to do is we need to put in four calibration figures. If you search for Nelson Siegel Svensson on Wikipedia, you'll find these calibration figures. You can put anything you like in here. But I would suggest that these are pretty good guesses to get going with. And so for the four beta figures, put 0 0.01 in. For the two lambda radioactive decay style figures, I would suggest that one and one are good starting values. Now these are going to be changed by a program called Solver. And so what we're going to do now is build a curve which won't be any good, but which will be changed later by a special piece of Excel magic called the Solver tool. I need to build up another curve in this column. And when I build up another curve in this column, that magic piece of technology called Solve will move these around to make this curve fit. 
these figures on the left here. Let's put the formula in here that we're going to be working with. Now I've had to put the formula on a special post-it note because it's a bit of a monster. Let's have a look at it. There it is. You can see it's pretty evil. You might just want to pause the video there, maybe write that down, although I'll comment the cells later. So you will see this again very, very shortly. I'm just going to copy that formula and I'm going to paste it into the Z2 cell. Let's just stick that in there. And that's based upon these six calibration figures. You can see we've got beta 1, beta 2, lambda 1, lambda 2 at the end there. Let's copy that formula down then. So drag that down to there. And what we've now got is we've now got an unfitted curve. This is like the material from a suit before we make the suit. We're going to do some tailoring with these calibration statistics and we're going to make that suit fit the blue point line. And we're going to use the special solver tool to be able to do that. Now, before we can do that, we need to take a thing called special residuals. We're going to take some errors between this curve and this curve. We're going to take these errors and then we're going to square those errors to get rid of any negative signs. And then we're going to put those figures in here, but only where we have the two figures going. So this and this, we're going to take the distance between these two things, then square that distance to get rid of any negative amounts and then see what we end up with. Might make sense if I just do the formula now. So we do have the figures there and the figures there. Where we don't have the figures, We'll have to write some special code to avoid creating error terms. But let's just do that now with a formula. So that's going to equal if this thing here is greater than zero, i.e. we have a value there, then take the difference between these two things here. So that's going to be that take away that and raise it to the power two. So square the difference to get rid of any negative terms. Otherwise, if this field here is empty, then just do absolutely nothing. And we get some value there. Now I'm going to drag that one down too. Okay. Oh, before we carry on, let me just comment this field so that you can see it again later on. And let's get in there and just return so we can see what's going on. And I'll just drag this comment down to here. I'll also comment this field here so that we can see what I did there. Now we take all of these error terms, which exist between the blue points and the orange points where the blue points exist. So we take those terms, we square them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them all up. So I'm going to sum them in here using the usual sum trick. So I just need to drag this up to there, that should do it. Press return. Lovely. We'll comment that one too, just in case we forget it later. There we are. So that's a sum kind of column there. Now here's where the magic comes in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the solver command and I'm going to run it over those six values. And the solver is going to jiggle these things up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's going to make these things here go up and down, up and down, up and down. And we're going to try to minimize these six values here to make them collectively add up to as low a number as possible. And in doing so, hopefully they'll make this orange line fit this broken blue line. So let's have a crack at that then. Go to the data command, go to solver. The objective field is this field here. This is the sum field. And we want to minimize that field to make it as small as possible. What cells are we going to change? We're going to change these six cells here. Uh, we're okay with negative numbers, no problem there. Just go with the default kind of algorithm setup and then press solve. And hopefully you'll see, oh, that looks pretty good to me. Let's just okay that. What's happened, this solver has jiggled these figures up and down from my original inputs and has made the orange curve fit those blue points that we saw earlier. Isn't that a fantastic piece of magic? Now this Nelson-Siegel-Svensson equation is 
brilliant. It's probably the best one of these kinds of equations. It's better than the polynomial equation. It's better than Nelson Siegel earlier kind of equation for creating these non-linear lines and these curves. And most central banks and most software that you've ever seen that draws these kinds of lines is using this Nelson Siegel Svensson method to create these lines. You can see how well that that has done to create a full yield curve. And now I can see the 20 year probable yield, which is 3.2%. And I can see the probable, I've extrapolated the probable 30 year yield of 3.41%. So I think that's pretty good. What that means is we can now go for this 10 million. And I think that that is pretty good. Anyway, that's how to create the Nelson Siegel Svensson method to create yield curves from limited information. If you think that's any good, then go for it. I'll see you next time.